So now in this video, we're going to look at voltages again. We're going to use the 7805 voltage regulator. What that means is that it wants to keep 5 volts between those two points right there. You give it a higher voltage and while dropping the voltage, it's kind of like a resistor. It gets really hot. And so here's the package, the TO220. The uh, pin layout, left pin is the input, middle pin is ground. That's also connected to the tab there. Uh, ground. Some data sheets will say common for those two. And then the pin to the right when you're looking at the front is the output. Uh, out right there. Now the uh, data sheet shows uh, capacitors between the uh, input pin, ground, and also the output pin and ground. So instead of uh, 0.33 because I don't have one, I have a 0.47 microfarad. I put it there and we got a 0.1 uh, capacitor right there, 0.1 microfarad. You can probably get away without using the capacitors altogether, but since they're on the data sheet, I'm gonna include them there. So, in any case, the uh, primary function of it is to output five volts. If you need five volts, and you're working with a higher uh, supply voltage, but uh, you just need a somewhat low amount of power at five volts, you can use one of these. You can also put a heat sink on the tab and get more power out of it. But in any case, we're going to take that 7805 and uh, you need at least about 7 volts approximately to get 5 volts out and uh, for 10 volts out we're going to need at least 12 volts. And to get 10 volts with the 7805 what we're going to do is that's not going to be ground anymore where the capacitors are we're going to put them directly to the uh, ground pin or common pin because we have the actual ground going to be on the other side of the zener down. We're going to put the anode of a 5.1 volt zener down. Low current's going to be flowing through it, so it's going to be probably 5 volts, maybe a little less. But uh, the cathode is going to go to our ground pin for the 7805, also commonly called the uh, common pin. And what that's going to do is build up another 5 volts between uh, those two points and thus we will have about 10 volts out. We will look at that with the oscilloscope. So now the uh, power supply is off. It's set to 13 volts right now but uh, we will zoom in really quick and we have the orange jumper here. I'll move this over one spot. You can see the orange jumper and then this blue jumper which is to ground so that I can move it uh, easily and then I have this white jumper down here that's to the output pin right there and you can see the two capacitors right there so that's uh, from in to ground and then from ground to out right there the uh, resistor here and the LED this is a one kilo ohm resistor since the power supply is set to 13 uh, volts that will protect the LED from whatever voltages we come up with. So in any case, the power supply is off right now. We will take the oscilloscope there. The uh, end of the cable there goes to these alligator clips. They come to these two jumpers right there. And we're just gonna go across our load right there with the jumpers. So the black alligator clip with the blue jumper, we're gonna put to ground. That's a direct connection right there and then the uh, red one. We're going to come to that side of the resistor. We could also go up to that row there, but it's a little crowded. So that jumper is a direct connection. There we go. We have it across the load. We're going to come back and let's actually drop this down to 7 volts. Right there. I'll hit uh, the uh, power supply and uh, there we go. Hit the power button. I should say now the output is on right there. And so the thing is, you look at the oscilloscope there, so each square, we're across the load right now, but uh, that is also to the output, is uh, 2 volts right there. Because we're going to deal with more than 8, there's 8 squares, so now 8 is right there. But we got 2, 4, and then 5 volts. That is what we expected. That's what's across the uh, load at the output. If I raise this from 7 volts to 13 volts, it's going to stay at 5 volts right there, really steadily right there. So the 7805 
is doing what it is supposed to. So now, we already looked at the schematic for the uh, Zener DAO. So the anode is to the uh, negative rail right there, the actual ground, and then the uh, cathode is right there. And what I'm going to do is, I have an orange jumper, there we go. Red jumper, I mean, we're going to take the uh, red jumper and go right there. I don't want to leave this ground pin uh, floating. So I always want it connected to something, setting the voltage. These tabs do get hot if you have more current going through them. We're at low current. So be careful touching them. But in case, I'm going to put that red jumper to the same spot. So right now, both sides of the Zener diode are to the negative rail right there because those two jumpers are connected. I'm going to pluck this one now that I have the red one right there. So the ground was never left floating. First it was directly to ground. It was ignoring this. And now it's going to the Zener before it goes to ground. So we have that. It's a 5.1 volt Zener. About 5. So we have an additional 5 volts, as you can see there, across the load. And the LED got brighter. So again, it's 2 volts per square. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Right there. So pretty straightforward. We added with a diode, a Zener diode in this case, uh, about 5 volts. Now, I have a red LED right here. So the red LED, we're going to wire it in the opposite direction of the Zener diode. So you can see here that uh, the anode is to the negative rail for the Zener diode. The black stripe, the cathode, is to the ground pin. So with the uh, LED, the short lead, the cathode, we're going to go to the negative rail. Long lead, the anode, we're going to go up one. Again, we don't ever want this ground pin floating. And uh, so we're going to take the uh, blue jumper again that I used uh, before. Come to that side of the LED. And you're going to see the LED light up. Let's zoom back a little bit. Because the LED has a lower forward voltage than the Zener diode. And so when they're both plugged in, all the current's going to go through the uh, red LED. And there we go. We have that. So the voltage dropped down. Now I can remove the jumper going to the Zener. So it's the LED. Now this is a red LED. So at low current, I measured it earlier, I think it's 1.85 milliamps of current is going through the red LED. And uh, so it's uh, a little more than 1.5 volts, but less than 2. So we have the 245 of the uh, 7805 right there. And then we added uh, a couple, a little less than 2 more volts above, above that. So remember, each square is 2 volts. So if we go up about a square from about half to about a half, that's about 2 volts right there. And it's actually a little bit uh, more shy than that. But in uh, any case, there we took the forward voltage in the case of the LED. And so it's uh, 2, 4, 6, and then 8's up there down to about 7. Looks like a little bit lower than 7. But in any case, we can stack voltages there. Just be careful you don't leave the ground pin floating. I fried some LEDs by uh, having the ground floating and then plugging it right to the LED. Here's uh, the blue ones. They seem to have fried uh, easily when I did that. But uh, as long as you got something connected to ground when you're swapping them over, it uh, seems to do just fine. And it's going to take the easiest path uh, when, when you do that. Whatever the easiest path is, that's what it's going to shift to. But uh, in any case, that's really it uh, for this video. I'll pop up some other videos. Make sure you check them out. Click like, subscribe, the bell, and all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. I have a link down in the description. That would help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.